Well, finally, the Bible says your mission and lifestyle is worthy of sacrifice. Notice the last phrase, verse 13. So then I ask you not to be discouraged over my afflictions on your behalf, for they are your glory. Your mission and lifestyle will require sacrifice. Paul says it. He said, I experienced afflictions on your behalf. But then he said, they are for your glory. In other words, what I've been through will lead you to faith in Jesus Christ so that you might receive the glory of God into your life and it will bring overwhelming joy to me in the context of my affliction. Listen, most of us as American Christians live very comfortable lives. But choosing a missional lifestyle means that you will give up your time, your money, and your energy to help people come to faith in Jesus Christ. And while it may not rise to the level of affliction, it will likely involve some sacrifice. A few years ago, I came across a book, and in that book is my favorite story of sacrifice. It's my favorite story. I'm just going to read to you just three short paragraphs. Are you with me here? My favorite story of sacrifice. It's from the book, The Cry of the Kalahari by Mark and Deliah Owens. The Kalahari is a region, a desert region in Africa. Listen to what they wrote. Deliah and I met in class at the University of Georgia, and it didn't take us long to find out we shared the same goal. By the end of the semester, we knew that when we went to Africa, it would have to be together. We decided to take a leave from the university and earn the money needed to finance the expedition. Once a site had been chosen, we thought someone would surely grant us the funds to continue. But after six months of teaching, we had saved nothing. I switched jobs and began operating a stone quarry crusher while Delia worked odd jobs. At the end of another six months, we had saved $4,900 plus money for airfare to Johannesburg, but it was still not enough. Trying desperately to raise more, we piled everything we owned, stereo, radio, television, fishing rod and reel, pots and pans, into our station wagon and drove it to the rock quarry one morning just as the men were coming off the night shift. We auctioned it all, including the car, for $1,100. A year after we were married, we boarded a plane with two backpacks, two sleeping bags, one pup tent, a small cooking kit, a camera, one change of clothes each, and $6,000. It was all we had, but we were going to Africa to study the brown hyena. The brown hyena, a mongrel dog-like animal that lives in the Kalahari Desert that these two graduates of the University of Georgia were willing to give their lives to learn more so that this animal might be preserved and protected. It's my favorite story of sacrifice. I don't make fun of these people. I admire them. They were willing to sacrifice everything they had to advance the cause of science and the protection of an animal they valued. What is wrong with us in the Christian church? I don't want to give a little extra. I don't want to take a a, a lesser paying job. I I don't want to invest more time in my church. Well, well, you're asking me to, to be uncomfortable maybe just actually talking to someone about Jesus. Oh. What we, we live in a world where people are strapping on suicide vests and blowing themselves up in the name of religion. We live in a world where people are sacrificing millions of dollars to elect political candidates to advance their ideologies. We, we live in a world where people are working 80 to 100 hours a week to try to build up careers and make enough money to pay their own medical bills when it destroys them from the inside out. 
We live in a world where people are making sacrifices all around us, and yet we come together and say, oh, we don't want to give up too much. We don't have to do too much. We don't want to make a big sacrifice out of this thing of being on mission with the gospel. Yes, we do. The gospel is worthy of our sacrifice. It's worthy of giving our time. It's worthy of giving our energy. It's worthy of giving our money. It's worthy of giving our lives so that more and more and more people might come to faith in Jesus Christ. You, in the moment of your conversion, received responsibility to live a missional lifestyle. You cannot disqualify yourself by saying you're not much of a Christian. Paul already covered that. Your responsibility is people, not places. Answer the question, who are my Gentiles? Who does God want me to go after with the gospel? And then get busy going after them. When you do this, you connect yourself to God's eternal purpose. And whatever it costs you, even to the point of Paul's word, affliction, it will be worth it because of the glory of God demonstrated in the lives of the people you reach and the joy it will bring you to know that you are a part of God's eternal purpose. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for moving in our hearts today, convicting us by your word and showing us what it means to live on mission for you. Lord, I thank you that as a college student, I was challenged to live this way and now 40 years later, it's been worth it. Thank you so much, Father. And now I pray across this room that you will move in power to raise up missional disciples who will live a missional lifestyle, who will get the gospel to many people. And Lord, some of them, some of them, you'll even want to displace and take to a new place, a new location, a new, a new people. Give them the courage to do that as well. Father, we receive from you today what you can only do in our lives and how you can change us. And we invite you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen.